Okay. Hi. So, um, can you hear me? Am I clear? Right, we have 13 viewers. Hi, everyone. Hello. Okay, while we wait for people to come in. So I guess we're live, we're all good. Video, audio, if you can hear me, please do message, uh, drop a comment. I know you're quite surprised. <laughs> I'm just like sitting in for a while while we're waiting on for people to come in. And we do hope you come in. There, yeah, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to wherever you might be watching from. Um, I'm Nina. I'm the manager for global markets of VMB Hypoallergenics. Uh, you might have seen me in some of our makeup and top tip photos, which we do hope this help you. Um, to, you know, use uh, our products more on makeup on my end. Um, but I'm not here to talk about makeup. I will be sitting in for just a few moments while we wait for our dynamic duo. Um, Laura and Doctora to come in as they walk you through our skin sites topic today about ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids, and why, I, why are they so important for your skin health. Um, they are fundamental to keeping our skins looking all flexy, strong, radiant, and dewy, and definitely play a part in conditions like atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, ichthyosis. I hope I mentioned that correctly. Okay, so start sending in those questions. Please comment down below where you're watching us from. Uh, though the team is the one who's going to read them. I don't want to read them because it makes me also panicky. Um, and or ask any questions, anything about skin, um, any topic uh, related to the skin, uh, our topic today, or any topic that you might want us to cover for our future skin sites. Um, so ask your questions as early. So our dynamic duo will have the chance to answer them all today. Um, while we wait that wait for them to come in. So while we are settling in and waiting for more people to watch, uh, please do make sure to follow us on Instagram. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us here on Facebook. Um, I think I have uh, Laura with me already. Whoops. Oh, hi. Sorry, hi. I am. I am here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, Nina. You look Hello. lovely. <laughs> so this is, uh, I am just like sitting in for Laura and the Clara. Okay. <laughs> and what? this is our first time like doing this tandem thing. <laughs> Indeed. So. We're very excited to be trying something new. So yeah. where are you? And please continue and just let me know when you want us to. Sure. Sure. So uh, again, uh, to all our viewers, please do comment down below where you are watching from. Uh, this also adds to our skin tone uh, that we can share for our future skin sites live. Uh, and also, oh, to all the mothers out there, mommies, uh, moms, uh, had advanced happy Mother's Day. Advanced happy Mother's Day, Laura. Um, <laughs> and to all the mommies uh, out there. So we're going to, and with that, we also have quite a lot, lot of lined up specials. Live. Oh. Yes. And um, uh, I'm going to out there, mommies, uh, moms. 
there. And uh, so we are, um, uh, you can shop all our validated hypoallergenic products, the majority of which contain monolaurin plus our organic first press clinically published virgin coconut oil at vmvhypoallergenics.com internationally and vmvhypoallergenics.ph in the Philippines. You can also shop on Viber uh, for those in uh, the Philippines. But for the USA, we now offer Afterpay for all of our customers where you can shop now and pay later. Uh, for the whole month of May, also perfect gifting for your moms uh, all your, or your aunts or your friends who are also mothers. Uh, get 20% off on all our e-gift cards uh, valued at $50, $100, and $150. While in the Philippines, there's a lot of things happening also. GCash is now available as a payment method for all of your online purchases. So hurry, check us out at our website. Um, for our moms, give, we have a promotion that we call it Give Mom Her Due with our Mother's Day bundle. You get a Ula Lash Mascara and Re Everything Eye Serum Mini at almost 60% off. This is until May 9th. So uh, we have like three days left for that. So hurry and uh, make that purchase and make them like, you know, make give them their due. Uh, all main purchases also of Re Everything product, you get two travel size Re Everything eye serum for free. Uh, our model Sports 7185 gram is also now back in stock at our uh, Filipino, uh, at our uh, vmbhypoallergenics.ph as well as the id bump free toner and our essence antiperspirant, which we know that you've been waiting for. So uh, it's back in stock. Check I it was out. getting okay. desperate. I won't learn. <laughs> Okay. Uh, also a reminder that in the Philippines, our stores and our uh, VSRC are closed until further notice. Though we offer curbside pickup, call and collect service in VSRC from Mondays to Fridays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, also exclusive to the Philippines, if you'd like a teleconsultation with our uh, uh with our founder, Dr. Vermin Verado Rawal, and any of the doctors we work with, please do send us a private message here or on Facebook, and we will be glad and happy to assist you. All right. Hi, Dr. Good morning. Hello there, Alina. How are you? Good morning. Looking gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, Hi, good morning. So, looking good, kid. Uh, thank you. Okay. So, I think. Uh, since we have now our CEO and our founder, um, they're here to, you are watching all because of uh, these two amazing women uh. of the PMV. Uh, they're going to talk about, as I mentioned, more on ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids, um, and how they would um, make our skin flexy, strong, radiant, and do. So, <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you, Nina. Uh, everyone give your, you know, Facebook applause and a big love to Nina because she was nervous about appearing before us and doing all of the announcements and stuff. So make sure you show her your love and say she did an awesome job because she does all the damn time. Uh, I want to say hello again to everyone watching from Pasig and Venezuela, Valenzuela and Marikina. Makati, of course, and then yay, Tammy and Jenna from Maryland and from Utah. Hi, everyone. So Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our Skin Sites Live. Really, there's no point in me trying to discuss um, <laughs> the lipid matrix of the skin while she's here, because that's why she's here. Uh, but for those of you who are just joining us for the very first time, if you haven't yet met her, she's my mom. She's our founding dermatopathologist, but also widely published in lots of different things. Particularly of interest, I think, for this topic is on uh, contact dermatitis, atopic dermatitis psoriasis, because as we discussed in a live stream a while back, the skin barrier system is so important and people don't actually, I think, really understand how important it is. So we've discussed the skin barrier layer 
right? And in conditions like psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, et cetera, how it can have a defect or be compromised. But what we're talking about today is arguably one of the main reasons why the skin barrier layer is so fantastic, and that's the lipid matrix, which is- Among other things. Right, so, but one of, I yes. said. So uh -huh. lipid matrix would be the ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty Correct. acids, right? Yeah. Okay, so since this is so new to everybody, you want to get us started? Yes, by hi. Us sort of let, an me, let me greet everybody. Uh, Utah must be warmer there now. Uh, and then um, Maryland, did you say? Mm -hmm. Other places in the United States and wherever else you are. How do you do? Brian, my friend, Dr. Guevara from Davao said he would like to watch me uh, here. So if you ever come in, Brian, if you're there, hi, how are you? Okay. Um, this is a very interesting topic and it has gained so much importance in just the last five years, 10 years at the very most, of studying what was considered for a long time as just that flaky little thing part of the skin that peels off when you have dry skin and all that. And it turns out it's a very important layer. I actually prepared two slides, but apparently we can't show the we slides. Can. Oh, we can. can't do stuff. Uh, well, it is in the... No, I can show it now. Yeah, okay. It's, a, okay. it's here. <laughs> so okay. we're going to be showing a slide. This is why we're doing this through Zoom. Can you everybody see this? There. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Okay. So um, there. Yes. This is the barrier of the skin. And, uh, you know, the epithelium, whether it's the skin or your gut, because the gut also has an epithelium, they are the two very important parts of our body against... Uh, invaders, you know, in the gut, there's the microbiota people are always talking about and how to make it normal. That involves epithelium as well. And on the skin, it's epithelium again also, but protecting it from the outside world as well as from the inside, let's say the water going out. Okay. In the skin, this is what you should be looking at, very simplified. If you apply lipids, the oils, the moisturizers that you buy up here on the surface of the skin, it goes through that lipid membrane. Are y'all seeing me trace the little arrow okay. here? Okay. And it goes there and it is yep, the cell, the cell. This is the last cell before that. Now, after that, they're really no longer cells because they have no nucleus. But here, the cell called a granulocyte cell. Wait, are these the blue dots? This is the entire cell. Oh, sorry. Cell. Sorry. Okay, guys. All right. Sorry. Um, so I'm being her little mouse pointer. <laughs> this entire block that you see here, right? The squarish thing, that's the entire cell. That's the last cell of the epidermis. Okay. This is the stratum corneum, which is the most uh, exterior, the most surface, right? Layer yes, of the skin. The topmost layer of the and skin. And what she's saying is if you apply moisturizers, right? So it goes down here right? Mm -hmm. And then goes- If they're small enough. If huh? they're small enough, right. If they're larger mole molecules, they stay up on the surface of the skin. And that cell then- This entire sort of cell- Engulfs it. Okay. Brings it in. Yeah. It passes through two very important manufacturing agencies. One is called the endoplasmic reticulum. <laughs> and then it goes to the Golgi apparatus. Okay. You love these people. Good Lord. Then this is spit out now okay. as these globules. Okay granules rather right these are the source for your ceramides that go into that what they call the mortar okay, okay. between the bricks. hold on so what we're talking about today to be clear this yellow stuff right is that right mm -hmm. in between these flatter uh corneocytes correct that which is. are hot hot yeah i did some research <laughs> that's right i prepared keratin rich right so they're hard what she likes to say horny cells of these <laughs> I always make her giggle. I love it. So these flattened keratin rich uh, corneocytes in between them. That's what we're talking about today. This yellow stuff, which is the lipid. Which were the lipid and what she was pointing out here, if I understood her correctly, is these are say moisturizers. So these are the externally applied lipids, right? That you put in your skin. And this is what you hope that they do. This is the pathway that you hope that they take to help strengthen this and prevent water loss. But there's also a role that lipids from the, the food, food you, you eat, eat it play. comes from the blood vessels, right. goes up, eventually reaches 
this body layer of the skin, the top layer of the skin. Right. So I will stop sharing for now. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can get back here and just sort of check on people and make sure and you're not you're not sleepy yet from all of that explanation. I hope. <laughs> make sure <laughs> that everyone is still with us and understands what just happened there. This is the first time that we have done a slide and we figured it might be easier than doing our typical props. Right. I think props are great and I particularly like you know, the improvised ones that we have, but we thought this would be a nice way to really show you mm -hmm. what it looks like. So definitely let us know in the comments if this was just way over your heads and we need to clarify something or it was just confusing. Um, and then we'll try to spell it out more. I have a second slide which is equally oh. important. Oh, I did not know that. I'd have to find that. Okay, so okay. while I'm finding that, um, could you tell us a little bit more why are the lipids important in the skin barrier? Okay, the lipids are important. Those are primarily consisting of the cholest free cholesterol, free fatty acids, and the ceramides. Okay, I'll get there when you get the slide. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, there you go. Oh, Lee. Okay, this All is right. like yeah. This is like hardcore. Yeah. Now. Is my mom really prepared for this? Oh yeah. my God. You know, I really prepare for these live streams. Let me tell you folks, I, I know them already, of course, being a dermatologist and a dermatopathologist and all that, but still the, the are continually improving and uh, better papers that come out regarding what things are. So here, people always talk about the barrier as just those lipids, but just before we get to the lipids, Going back to that slide, if you still remember the very first slide that I showed you. Oops, wait, I think the I'm lipids are also very important in making the cell membrane of that granular cell, that big block that we showed you. Each and every cell in your body, in your entire body, has a membrane that covers it. It's called a lipid bilayer. In other words, two layers of lipids fatty acids, whatever, cover each and every cell of your body, whether it's your hair, your nails, your skin, and all the other particles and granules that are within a cell are also covered by lipids. So the lipids are very important, the quality of the lipids that you eat, which is the reason we had that anti-inflammatory diet study that I did, okay? That's lipids each and everything. Very important are the lipids. So don't skimp on the lipids when you eat, get 20 to 35%, right? So I don't understand what that means. I never have, I don't know how to measure my food by 25 to 35%. Roughly. Roughly. Get your plate, divide it in two. <laughs> okay. So math, got it. <laughs> like uh, Michelle Obama was the one who did that. You yes. know, she called it the healthy plate in 2010 came out with the US food and drugs. So a third of your plate should be healthy fats. Yes. Got it. Okay. All right. So where was I? <laughs> <laughs> I lost. Okay. Yeah, you wanted, the lipids. You wanted right, to go so through this table. Lipid membrane, but wait a second. Besides the lipid membrane that is in every cell, and in particular on that last layer of cells called the granular cell layer, that also has lipid-like materials within the granules that they spit out into that yellow stuff in the barrier layer that I showed you up on top. And that is where, so it's really just on the surface of the skin. Prior to my going into the lipids that you apply, the moisturizer in your skin, just remember the lipids are very important in both the eating because they contribute to it and they're important in the making of each and every cell good because they cover each and every cell of our body. Now we go to that particular part that most people nowadays talk about when they talk about the moisturizers that you apply in your skin. That's here. Look at this table. Yeah, I want you to this? look first at the yellow bar because practically everybody who's listening to me is probably affected by the cholesterol. What's by the way, in the lipids of that, what they call mortar or glue in between the bricks of the corneocytes in the most superficial stratum corneum, there are basically three kinds. There are the free cholesterol, the free fatty acids, and the ceramides, where supposedly in the normal skin, what's needed is three parts of ceramide, 50% ceramide rather, 25% free cholesterol, 
percent free fatty acids and a little bit of other things, right? Remember that normal values there. But when you're dealing with human beings in this day and age, just about everybody uses chemicals or is exposed to chemicals coming from bad the air. Not bad chemicals, but no. harmful chemicals. Yeah. Okay. The soaps alone, the disinfectants, I talk about this all the time, the disinfectants, the insecticides, the fresheners, the aromatherapy oils and all of that emitting oils, uh, perfumes into the air. Those are all irritants on the contact, on the, on the skin, okay? Not only that, a lot of people have a tube of uh, a steroid, a potent steroid in their mm. handbag. Whenever they're itchy on the mouth because of the mask that they've been wearing, they put it on there mm. or a little bit of a rash or whatever. They continually do this so that the steroid topically applied skin becomes also barrier deficient. And with aging, of course, and aging is a daily process, by the way, worsened by what are now called exposomes, the chemicals, the diet, the sleep lack, the, the factory emissions the, from the cars, etc. Anyway, all of those, therefore, that's why I highlighted the yellow, because they are the ones that really need help in that barrier. And for me, it's not 50% ceramide or, and, you know, 25% cholesterol and 15 of these of the fatty acid. It's actually in equal parts. So you should mm, have- That's a, why it's one is to one is that's to That's why one. I place that one is to one is to one. Okay. Where that ceramide three, three is to one is to one, or maybe two yeah. is to, yeah. One is to one is an atopic dermatitis because there's a particular protein okay. called filagrin <laughs> that is missing, mutated in some people that's missing and it's very important. Okay. That's where you have All right, the guys. ceramide. I am going to jump in here just am to I make very, sure- I okay. need to understand this. Okay. Right. I know we've gone through this before when discussing some formulations, but this is very interesting to me because the argument here is that as you apply or as you look for mm -hmm. ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids in your moisturizers, okay. it's not always a matter of just get all three, just get one. And even if you got all three, it's not equal parts necessarily for every skin concern. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. Okay. So if I'm hearing you right, um, cholesterol, this is something to apply on the skin, right? Yes. And yet you're looking for cholesterol and yet, sorry, it is on, ah, okay. I understand what you're saying here. Sorry. So for people who are on statins, mm -hmm. which are a certain kind of drug to help control their cholesterol, mm -hmm. something that happens is their skin barrier becomes yeah, boy, They become very dry skin. Very, very dry skin. So <laughs> Look, if you have- you people who are taking statins, your skin's dry, I bet. <laughs> okay. So if you're on statins <laughs> and you notice dry skin, it might be because the statins are causing- Decreasing your- A depletion of cholesterol. In the blood- and also in and your also skin. in the skin. So if you're on statins, what you might actually be looking for is a moisturizer or a topically applied product that has more cholesterol mm -hmm. because that's what's being depleted in your barrier. Folks, you don't even know how like forward thinking this is. Okay, for atopic dermatitis, eczema, what you need more of. Those are the people who have what they call eczema. People who start when they're little girls or even babies sometimes, but usually toddlers who start being scratchy and itchy and they usually itch in the creases of their body, here, back of the knees, recurrent over the years. In addition, they may even have asthma, sniffles. Those are called atopic people. Right. In the skin, that inherited trait is called atopic dermatitis. In some places of the okay. world, they just we have a eczema. live stream all about eczema. So okay. please look at that. But I just want to make sure I get through this. Hola, Juanita. It's good to see you. And Ryan is saying anatomy and physiology. Love it. <laughs> Fantastic. I mentioned <laughs> your name. This is an amazing young doctor from. Oh, doctor. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, he's Hi, a, Dr. He's in Davao. I listened to okay. him yesterday, last night. I am Buntagbo. So anyway, again, if we're and looking, we were shutting away madly. I said, I have to go I'm to a, sleep. Y'all, I'm going to watch me. I'm going to get through this table. I will. <laughs> and then we will take it off screen because I know it's a little. OK, so again, if you're on statins and you notice dry skin, you're looking for a topical product that can help replace your cholesterol. If you are suffering from atopic skin, right, 
what you're looking for is more ceramide yes. in your topically. If the ceramide is product. up on the top, a higher uh, place in the label, get that, you know? So okay. not all ceramide containing are necessarily what's good for you, but you have to be wise in reading the labels. If you're looking at very young infants, newborns, neonates, uh, you're looking at diaper dermatitis and at psoriasis, what you need is more of the free fatty acids. Okay. So notice the difference here, right? Yeah. It's more cholesterol for people on statins, more ceramides for atopic dermatitis, more free fatty acids for yeah. diaper dermatitis, people who have psoriasis or neonates. Okay. okay. Now, let me now summarize all of that. In fact, the protection of the barrier of your skin always needs three items. What we call the occlusive, the humectant and the emollients. What we've been talking about so far are just the emollients, ceramide, the lipids, the ceramides, you know, the because cholesterol, the, the fatty acids. Mm -hmm. Right, right. The, the occlusives <laughs> are things like petroleum, vaseline, okay. lanolin, etc. That works differently, but let's let's finish this off so we can get off the table. Uh, okay, so here for irritant contact dermatitis, which is different from allergic contact dermatitis, and we do have a blog post on that because they are different, uh, for long-term use of topical or oral steroids, for mental stress, for aging, the oxidation that comes with aging, you're looking at basically all three pretty much equally distributed. The cholesterol, the free fatty acids, and the ceramides in a moisturizer or a topical product that is equally distributed. One is to one is to one, equal, right? right? Versus these other situations that we were talking about on statins, more cholesterol, atopic dermatitis, more ceramide, uh, psoriasis, more free fatty acids. I just want to emphasize that besides the lipids, you really have to get those occlusives we were talking about. That'll be another live stream. Okay, occlusives. The occlusives, because <laughs> they are the ones that prevent the water that is naturally now present on the top layer of your skin from evaporating into the air. That's what the purpose okay. of the occlusive is. The humectant, on the other hand, are the chemicals that when you apply it on the skin, they attract the water from down there, from your bloodstream, from whatever other tissues, to go up and saturate with fluid, with, with okay. the water that epidermis we were talking about what so, a, what, occlusive protecting from the outside <laughs> humectant absorbing water from the inside okay so i'm gonna try <laughs> y'all bear with me okay i'm gonna try to to give a nice sort of synopsis of where we are so far <laughs> you control yourself give me a second let me try so what I, we have, i love her by the way i know <laughs> what what is it the, okay so what have we learned today, right? We have reinforced the importance of the stratum, uh, the sorry, the stratum corneum, the barrier layer of the skin. This is so fundamental to our skin's health for everything, right? From protecting us from outside invaders, microbes, from preventing us from uh, preventing damage from UV light, everything really it is so fundamentally important which is why we keep talking about barrier layer barrier layer barrier layer the barrier layer has these hard horny cells the corneocytes in between which live these beautiful lipids cholesterol ceramides and uh, free fatty acids mm -hmm. today we're talking about the latter the lipids and what i believe if i heard her correctly it's really an inside and an outside job that you're looking at, right? Mm -hmm. The outside job is you have to be able to find products that are humectants mm -hmm. that draw water up to keep that layer nice and moisturized and gooey and water filled. You also want occlusives to stop water from leaving, right? So you want hydrophilic, which is water loving and hydrophobic. Darling, yes, she's right. pretty good. That's huh? right, I pay attention. Um, <laughs> This is an interaction that we want. We want a nice balance of that. In addition, talking about an inside out job, you do want to be able to eat the right lipids to help keep your cells really nice and coated well and healthy. Correct. So far, that's what I'm hearing. Um, what, the other thing, though, that, that kind of was gone through in detail, but I don't know if we even realize how important that is, we're getting to a point in the science of understanding the lipid matrix of the skin 
where you might start seeing products that have different ratios of lipids mm -hmm. depending on what your skin needs. So as we discussed, if you are on statins or your dry skin is because of cholesterol being depleted, then you might be able to look for something topically applied on the skin that um, helps balance out, brings back more cholesterol, right? If you're looking at atopic skin, then you want something with more ceramides. Mm -hmm. And then if you're looking for uh, psoriasis, diaper rash, and things like that, something with more free fatty acids, for the rest of us, it would be something with all, all three of them sort of equally. But I find it fascinating to think of the future of skincare, mm -hmm. where you talk about oils or moisturizers mm -hmm. that will be humectant or occlusive. I guess for those things, they would have to be humectant because they have to penetrate. You know, to penetrate the water from down below from right. us. No, but I mean, going the up into the, applies uh, the topical goes down. Right. So they would have to be in a medium that is humectant or occlusive. So usually in either, depends again, okay. depends upon the person and whether you're very dry, in this case, you want to use more of an ointment form. And uh, be, but because it's more occlusive, or you want to use a cream, which is the next. Right. Okay. Lotion is more thin, there's lots more water in it. It's not as occlusive yeah. if you're looking for the occlusiveness. By the way, mm -hmm. just want you to know, and I'm sure I'm not the only one among these top dermatologists that we have in our country, by the way, I just want you to know, we have some amazing dermatologists in the Philippines. And if you go to dermatologists as well in your part of the world, they are up to date on these things. So go and ask them about these things that we discussed and confirm with them or ask them what they think as well. But in my clinic at our pharmacy, I confused the pharmacist one time because I said, we're going to make three types of barrier repair cream. You're going to use this, this, and that. One part of cholesterol, one part of free fatty acid, and one part of the ceramide, okay? But you're going to make another one also that is one is to three is to one. And then another one, which is one is to one is to three. You know, so whatever I felt was lacking in a particular skin for a patient, I would adjust it accordingly for the barrier repair to initiate it. On top of that, I would put an occlusive, a humectant. And by now you all know I love coconut oil because it is both an occlusive and as well as a humectant. So can I break this down a little bit before we get to some of the questions that we've already gotten? We got another great one from Tammy on rosé on uh, yeah demodex mites and rosacea. Okay. And another one here about the decrease in ceramides in skin. I've seen ceramides touted in skincare, mm -hmm. right? So I'm curious. Maybe we can go through a little bit. Do all these three lipids, so fatty acids, ceramide, and cholesterol, do they basically have the same function? The ceramides, the fatty acids, no. So they are the all lipids. Right. But so what's but the, the ceramides, between, uh, say, ceramides yeah. in, in people who have this mutation or the gene lacking or whatever that, so they don't make as much filigree, which is a protein that is in the membrane of the corneodesmosome. But ceramide is is rich in filigree. Is that it? Yes. Okay. So ceramide, ceramide is a filigree. Ceramide is a filigree. It's a spingolipid. <laughs> okay. It's a ceramide. It's a, it's a. I'm going to know that. It's a sphingolipid. It's a sphingolipid. It, just, it just sounds funny to me. So it's a sphincter. It's a sphingolipid. It's not a sphincter. It's a sphingolipid. It's a sphingosine <laughs> molecule to which a lipid is attached. And that's called a ceramide. Fabulous. Okay. Now, ceramide versus cholesterol. They're both lipids. But what's the diff? It's a it's one of the lipids. Yeah, but is there a difference between them or? Oh yeah, okay. structurally. Okay. You know these uh, ceramides are amazing creatures, uh, chemical structures. They have one end which is what we call hydrophilic. They have another end which is hydrophobic, and because one is philic, loves water, and the other one is phobic to water, they therefore are splayed out, they're very long chemical structures. They're splayed out on the surface. This is the stratum corneum. That thin layer that you have is beautifully arranged by God. So it's splayed out, flat, and they are stacked. 
one after the other like that. That's the purpose for the ceramide. Okay, the cholesterol is yeah, the oil that sort of, in addition, is a source for the others to make into structures because some of the cholesterol might be in the sphingolipids actually. Okay. And then the free fatty acids are so the, the ones. So the cholesterol is almost like an origin. Yeah. It, it goes into the production of other lipids. By the way, cholesterol, by the way, is not a bad guy, huh? Ah. The amount of cholesterol you take into your gut, you know, in the animal fats and all of that, you know, we're not going to this very much, but the thing is that much of that is actually goes out of, you know, your other, other, other air hole. Uh, but the cholesterol in the body is actually freshly made by the liver on demand because cholesterol is a mender of mm -hmm. a break in the blood vessels, for instance. There's a little bit of an erosion or a plaque or whatever. The body signals the cholesterol, send me some of that ALDL or whatever to, to, you know, to, to heal this thing. Or cholesterol is a, you know, it's used it's in steroids. Yeah, it's a response chemical made yeah. by the liver mostly, the one that is circulating in your body. There's actually really interesting new stuff on cholesterol not being the hyper-focus um, mm -hmm issue of cardiologists and yeah. now switching to inflammation right because a lot of times cholesterol is released as a response to inflammation to help heal yes. correct that's right and that actually is what ends up clogging the arteries but if you just treat what's clogging the arteries as opposed to the inflammation that's causing the release of that substance to heal then that's not exactly dealing with the problem right you have to deal with the origin problem to begin with the latest i saw came from i think cardiology us you know that you know, the, the bad thing that they ascribe to cholesterol is over the many, many, many years is not necessarily right. So, okay. So we've, we've heard, so then fatty acids. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the difference between ceramides, which are, do you remember? Because I said sphincter. Sphingo. No, that's all, sphingo. Okay. <laughs> that's all I can remember. Sphingo. Sphingo proteins, rich in fill. No, it is a filigrin. Yes. Okay. Um, cholesterol is like a building block for other lipids. It's a healing thing, correct? Yes. Okay. Fatty acids are what? Fatty acids are the um, workhorse. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, like I told you before, the every cell, every organelle, every particle that is within that cell, practically all really have a lipid by main membrane. What does that mean? The fatty acids that we're talking about contribute to the making of each of those cell membranes. And interestingly, a, a, a lipid bilayer, by the way, this I have an article on this, as far as the lipid bilayer of the COVID oh. uh, organism that we can talk the about another time and how, yes. For your earrings. We're doing studies. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing studies. We're doing studies on uh, the, the effect of bilayer. the coconut oil and that lipid bilayer. Of anyway, the coronavirus. each yeah. and every set of the coronavirus, that lipid bilayer contributed to by the fatty acids. So they're there to help repair any of the corneocytes which need to have some fatty uh, acids to repair it and to, you know, to go in and to you know, just be part of the entire uh, So the oil fatty acids there. are in the cell wall? Yes. Okay, of all our cells. All our cells have double okay. layer. It's a double layer. Okay. Phospholipids is what they're called. <laughs> Phospholipids, there's a phosphate molecule attached to two <laughs> fatty acids. So it's like a fork, you know, a tuning fork. There's the phosphate phase, and then a fatty acid and a fatty acid. On the other side, a phosphate, a fatty acid, and, a fatty, and they like that. So in that cell membrane, the inside of it is lipid only. There's no water that goes in. That's very, that's a lipid milieu. On the outside, it's a this lipid is the membrane. milieu, folks. Right. And the outside of that is the water. So if, if you can just imagine your cell, your cell membrane, within the cell membrane are the fats and through that go the proteins that signal to the world. You know, the proteins are what's like this corona spike coming from inside the cell. We don't have her cool to the earring. World. We don't have her cool earring, but we have this. <laughs> She's talking about this. This is the, the cell, cell membrane. membrane made of fatty acids. Made up of fatty Lipid acids, by layer. right? Inside is a whole bunch of, it's basically the, the, the entire industry. It's the yes, city yes. that produces all these proteins and blah, right. blah, 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 blah. 
And then it has, doesn't produce anymore. It's no longer active. Ah, okay. It's just sent to it from below. Oh, okay. You know, and then when no it goes pills. out, yeah. that's how it communicates. It to communicates the body. to the body by glycoprotein molecules, like the coronavirus molecule that tells the world I'm here. Folks. Okay. So in the coronavirus, it's got these spikes that says, ah, I hate you. Bye, okay. bye, bye, bye. But that is the lipid bilayer. And so therefore, that needs repair every now and then because that's a lot of work. It does communications with the inside and the outside world, you know, through these proteins that go across it. Okay. So if it needs repair, the fatty acids we're talking about. Yes, ma'am. Is the one that's used to repair. Okay. So again, I did the synopsis earlier. Stratum corneum, the lipid by the lipid matrix, these three, three lipids basically that go through the cells there in the topmost layer, ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids, right? Um, and sorry, what we've discussed is the difference between those three lipids where ceramides, um, would be that that's sphinx, spy, spin, spinder, spin, sphincter, <laughs> sphingo, my sphingo, sphin so my sphincter has to go, sphingo, <laughs> I've got to remember this, if it kills me, the filigrin, right? Um, which helps conditions that are de uh, deficient in filigrin, right? Then you have cholesterol, which is a little bit of a building block for other lipids. It's a healing lipid. So healing, 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 think that as a response to inflammation too. Then the fatty acids are what make up the cell walls of all of our cells in our entire body. They're the ingredients right. needed to, you know, okay. whatever. So all of that is important to our skin. And again, what's interesting is it's not just what you put on top of your skin. In fact, we always say it, right? It's a skin side out job. Your skin responds, looks better, benefits from when you take care of yourself internally, right? So you have to eat the right things and that includes healthy lipids. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since that is now clear, um, what are some signs of a compromised lipid matrix? Oh, dry skin, thick, scaly, itchy, red, because the skin inside is the, the blood vessels inside is probably responding to what caused mm -hmm. the lipid, you know. Okay. So in other words, to be I think for me, what I'd like to underscore here for everybody before we get into those questions is... I think one of the bigger myths that we have is that skin type is everything, right? Our skin type can change over time. I never had dry skin growing up. I was hyper oily as a kid growing up. Of course, as I age and I start producing less sebum in general, I'm going to see drier skin. Mm -hmm. But as I age, I might also have a more damaged skin barrier layer mm -hmm. just because of days when I was younger of sitting out in the sun mm -hmm. or because of days of COVID where we're disinfecting more or whatever else. I developed um, seborrheic dermatitis later in life and rosacea. Mm -hmm. Then now I'm looking at you had acne. Uh, yeah, I had acne as a kid, for example, which also barrier is compromised. There you go. Acne. So for me, it's not all just about, this is my skin type. It is forever. The skin definitely changes. The other thing to remember is, I think she, she just hit the, the nail on the head here. When you think about acne, you think it is completely unrelated to any other problem of the skin. You can have dry skin and have acne. Absolutely. Acne is one way to um, impact the barrier of the skin, mm -hmm. right? All these things are interconnected. It's not so cut and <clears throat> dry. Dry skin also, <laughs> not sorry, I could not resist. Dry skin also is not just dry skin. So what sometimes we end up hearing is, ah, just my skin is just dry, you know? There's a really, really good chance it's dry because of a topic, uh, an irritant dermatitis, a, a developing allergic dermatitis, uh, contact dermatitis to something that you're touching a lot and you don't realize is causing the dryness. Mm -hmm. It could be because of statins that you're on, <laughs> which are depleting your cholesterol. It could be because of several things. So don't dismiss your dryness as something that's just the way it is. As a matter of fact, when I treat people, I take a long history of things that they're using, doing, blah, 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 to look for the causes first. I don't just say, 
use this, we'll try this one this time, we'll use that. No, 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 I go into the background because what's important is what caused it, right. what brought it about. Okay, so going to the first question, this is Tammy, she asked um, rosacea. So if it's caused by demodex mites, mm -hmm. it's caused by no. a few things. It's not caused by demodex no, mites. It just lives there, it's just like any of the, the microbiota right. of our skin, by the way, we haven't touched upon the fact that when the barrier oh, is sure. compromised, that microbiota that's innate on the top layer of our skin as well, they, the poor things, you know, the, um, they become abnormal also. Yeah, demodex, okay, so for first, Tammy, let's answer this. But demodex mites are our friends, right. just like Malassezia fungus. These things live happily in our skins. Normally. Normally. The problem is when they get a little, you know. Juggled. They get, yeah, the balance, they, there's an imbalance, the imbalance in yes, our that's a good word. microbes. So, Either because you've been using too much disinfectant, so killing the, um, the both the colonizing and pathogenic bacteria, you know, so that now what becomes stronger are the the normal commensal. I mean, yeah, what do you call our it? friends, our friendly bacteria <laughs> right. and fungi. So the others they are killed, and so therefore they become more. Right, and all of a sudden this fungus, like what we call Malassezia, which normally is a good guy, is just there, you know, in the follicle. We, we're getting to see a lot of malassezia folliculitis nowadays. Okay. Forehead. But specific spot. to her question, right? So can VCO kill the mites or at least lessen their amount to the point of not having to take small doses of doxycycline twice a day and or use the topical metronidazole antibiotic? Yeah. Coconut oil <laughs> has been shown. The reason why coconut oil is so broad spectrum in the way it you know, kills microbes. It's because most antibiotics, their action is enzymatic. It's mm -hmm. chemical, it's enzymes acting upon the enzymes also that are producing the inflammation or whatever. All right, from the bacteria. So that's enzymatic. Well, it's been shown in a beautiful electron microscopic video coming from Sweden that because the coconut oil fatty acids are 65% of them are short, they're called medium chain lung, where most of the oils that you use will have long chain. Wait, wait, right? We might have dropped connection. Hold on, let us know, please. Are we still here? Oh, we're on, we're on. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Many like the soybean and um, corn oil and uh, whatever other oils, olive oil, and you know, they're all long, long. They about C carbon 16 to 18, 14, 16, 18, 20. Coconut oil, 65% are short. They're in, in that C8, 10, and 12 carbons, they're short. Plus, in addition, they are 92% saturated. Being saturated, they have no unsaturated bonds that bend or right. crooked. But so on demon mites. So therefore, <laughs> wait a second. Okay, okay. So therefore, they lie flat, and they're like me, a very short, and you know, I can go through crowds very easily, whereas you can't. So she doesn't know Tammy. We they, don't know. <laughs> Just saying. A short, flat, and compact log like things in the electron microscopic video picture that they showed that they actually can get to the cell membrane we're talking about of microbes, whether it's bacteria, fungus, or parasite, like a demodex, break down to the cell membrane and make it. Okay, so but the question, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm asking Tammy's question correctly. Tammy, if I understood you correctly, the main question is, you want to see if you or whoever you're talking about can get off of doxycycline twice a day mm -hmm. and metronidazole by just using the VCO instead. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're saying it can be done. Yes. Okay, but clearly I have a son-in-law. Okay. I have a son-in-law if I may talk about him. Tammy, Tammy is your people. She's four six, she says proudly. And she's like, that's right. So I can go through crowds. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, Tommy. Okay. Yes. So, so he has yeah. rosacea. When I first met him, they were dating and all that. I said, oh my God, rosacea, right? Well, through the years, I've taught him to use two particular products. The VCO as moisturizer, because they get very dry skin also in rosacea. Mm. He uses that. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, so it has its uses, therefore already that we discussed. On top of that, I use another chemical called azelaic acid, except the acid is so strong and irritating 
So that is in some products that you can, you you probably may, may been given. I use acyl oil diglycinate, which is salt, a little bit less effective, but at least doesn't irritate. And the combination of the acyl oil diglycinate with the coconut oil and a very good uh, sun and light screen on top, mm -hmm. just those three. He doesn't take that. anything at all. He doesn't take any oral medication. Right. He hardly, hardly ever gets a So in fact, if I hear her correctly, number one, you know, ideally, actually, we would get off the drugs, period, because also all that antibiotic use yeah, we'll, can we'll cause an imbalance. Do something to the gut exactly. microbiota. And, well and the topical, question. our microbiome, right? But second, I want to underscore this is not a dermatological consultation, right, Tammy? So she can't see That's you. Right. So make sure to double check this with your dermatologist. And third, something to underscore to anyone who has rosacea, um, it is such a multifactorial condition. Sure. So Thank it's you. never just one thing. So yes, partly it's the demodex mites. We need to calm those suckers down. Um, but it's also... <laughs> um, inflammatory markers, cathelicidins, right, are found there. So we want a lot of anti-inflammatories. BCO can help there. Certainly potassium azeloid diglycinate is known to really help there. Um, also meditating, not getting so emotional, truly. This avoiding is, the yeah, sun. Avoiding the sun. So there's, it's multifactorial and has to be managed like that. But I think, I hope we answered your question. Angie's asking a lipid matrix. I'm guessing the barrier layer and its impact on acne, oily and acne prone skin. Depends upon the, again, acne is very multifactorial. And there is the adolescent acne, which is due to the hormones that are going on in the body, transforming a, teen, a young kid to teenage, uh, you know, making her grow her everything and starting her menses and all that. So that's adolescent acne, which is basically hormonal. Then there's the adult acne, which begins at the age of about 20 for females, a little bit older for men, because they mature a little bit later. <laughs> but, and, but do you have more lipids in your skin if you're oily and acne prone? Yes, in the adolescent acne, okay. because so the uh, sebaceous glands are stimulated by the hormones. In the adult acne, they're also multifactorial in that they can be hormonal from stress, mm. you know, so they'll be steroid like. And produce those steroid type of acne and again it could be also sweating so much so that you get the pterosporum actually malassezia, malassezia actually hitting them yeah. it can be because of uh, cysts in your ovaries but, uh, I, you know? sorry i think I, what i want to definitely address here angie is um i don't think you should lessen your lipid intake in food Mm, to control oily skin or acne. Right, right, right. Because those are healthy lipids that we need. Those are not, they won't cause the acne. Correct. Acne is caused by things clogging the pore. Those are the comedogens, right? Sorry, I wondered. But <laughs> not at all. I mean, this is valuable information. Uh, okay. You have to charge an arm and a leg to get it otherwise. Um, also, it can be caused by stuff that irritates the follicle. So allergens can irritate that and cause inflammation and cause infection, et cetera. So lipids are still important for oily uh, and acne prone skin. Cause I know we hear sometimes if I have oily acne prone skin, maybe I don't need a moisturizer. Kind of, maybe you do, but just the right one. Right. Um, okay. We're getting through this quickly. Maybe the last two questions because you have to, go, have to soon. go. Yes. How can oh, I my, increase yes. ah, what foods are high in ceramides and how can I increase ceramides in my skin? Foods are high in ceramides. Um, Good question. Yeah, we'll have to look that up. I actually don't know. Um, you know, I believe if I may segue first, I much I like coconut oil very much, right? And yet I will not tell you to just use coconut oil alone in your food for cooking. There should always be a balance in nature, you know. So I tell people have a little bit of olive oil because they have very good. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, just, just avoid the fatty acids trans, there as well. Trans fats. Yeah. The high in ceramide, is that the question? Yeah. They are manufactured by the body. Ah. So there is no ceramide containing. I don't think this is why I had to pause. So, how about skincare? Can you get ceramides in skincare? Because there are skincare products that help having ceramides. They are actually synthesized okay. or gotten from vegetable sources. Okay. There you go. Last question, because I know she has an 11. Um, I'm 40. I read that people in their 40s decrease in ceramides. 
people in their 40s, the ceramides in their skin decreases by 60%. Is okay. there any chance I can still increase if I start in my 40s late? Sure. You can always, you yeah, you can always begin. And I tell you, I had a patient I saw just two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. She had, you know, one of those dermatitis, which is so chronic, dry, red, itchy, scaly, nine over 10 itching, 10 over 10 dryness, you know, like that kind of a, when the resident gives me the history and all that. In two weeks when she came back, the itching, the dryness, the scaling were about two to three over 10 already. She was amazed at about quickly her skin had become better. And all of it really was just skincare, proper skincare, giving her the right humectant, occlusive, and the emollients based upon the things that we discussed today. And the most important, looking into what may have contributed to the original thing. So steroids, they're great. They remove the inflammation very quickly, but then you get hooked and addicted to it. And the next thing you know, you're applying it every time. And then it contributes to more barrier dysfunction because mm -hmm. it thins the skin as well. It's also tachyphylaxis. Yeah, yeah that right. was a word that I used. Like sphingo. <laughs> ah, told you I'd get it. Yeah, so important. So I hope I, you know, let's uh, talk about food. And yeah, I'd like, can we talk about anti-inflammatory diet and okay. food as helping to replenish the right oils and we how did it one does on that skin and nutrition body. but let's do another and yeah. let's focus on anti-inflammation mm. and lipids okay okay thank you so much thank you right to her thank you so I much for you. and thank you for your questions because like the last one it made me think well, what well, how can i explain this <laughs> well and easily it will make me think some more thank I you know. my darling mm. she's got to swing go <laughs> 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 11 o'clock <laughs> appointment okay. God, God, that word is going to be my <clears throat> my Waterloo, my Swingo. Okay, folks, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. Just uh, a reminder. So this is our new um, schedule that we will be keeping because she has like a bunch of dermatopathological things that all of a sudden got um, if, just whatever. The schedule started going crazy. Um, so we will be back here next Wednesday night, uh, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. in the U.S. in Eastern Standard Time and 10 a.m. Thursday morning here in the Philippines. Um, as a reminder, please stay safe, get vaccinated, wear your masks anyway. Um, remember, you can shop our products at vmvhypoallergenics.com internationally and vmvhypoallergenics.ph in the Philippines. If you have had a patch test and still find that you're struggling picking products that you can use, drop us a private message or an email in our website, and we will help customize recommendations for you based specifically on your allergens and possible cross-reactants. If you would like a teleconsultation with my mother or other doctors or nutritionists that we work with, drop us a PM. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And yeah, please let us know in the comments uh, or in any of our social media platforms, what else you would like to learn about? What else you'd like us to talk about? Um, definitely, we love hearing from you. This is kind of our, our thing. We really enjoy it, right? Uh, being able to talk to you guys and hear what you're interested in. So we're here for you for sure. Um, and yeah, otherwise, be safe. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful day, wherever you are. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ooh, you know what else I'd like is feedback on, on the slides. Is it too much? Is it too academic? Should we just use props? We'd like to know. Bye, everyone. Thank